that God does all the time, all the time, out of the We know the will of them. We're not just talking about the How are you going to make the American great again? The law's not going to do it. Trump's not going to do it. God's going to do it. Amen. Let's say this together. If my people who are called on my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn in a wicked way, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. It's on the hand clap of praise. Yeah. God is so good to us. There you go. Remember this, y'all take this with me. This is what the of politics. We are, we are in a crisis with the nation. We need God to intervene. No matter our political viewpoint, all this one together to see God. Pray for this room. Begin a prayer for the victims of this story. The mountains have seen something I don't think they can ever see. This is crazy. So we're going to pray for these people. We're going to see things to these people. Uh, we're gonna, we got we got connections. We're gonna find out. The also the sheriff's office is asking for water, baby supplies, and the people that are some people have already heard from again. This is the thing that everybody else going to talk to is that they're needing water and they're needing baby supplies. Okay, or cash to buy water and baby supplies. All right, ready? Where's the prayer for Israel? Uh, so how long does your grace for saving your those who seek? At your right hand, rip from their foes, protect them like the people of your eye, hide them in the shadow of your wings, and the wicked who are selling them from their deadly enemies who are all around them. Amen. Say this to me. The church is not audience to be entertained, and so we're going to be trimmed as in the power. Amen. Read this. These are the two most important hours of all week. We're going to make a chairs deal. I'm here today for worship, not be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one and set my worship to the Lord. Let's pray for those folks in this church. Lord, right now, I need you to see the devastation. The Lord, there will be more than one way. They're really more used to it. And people have been getting in the middle of the North Carolina where you wouldn't expect much. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch me. I ask you to touch on the police. And Lord, touch our friends that are going up there to take care of business and lay them out. And I know, God, that you got this, and we're giving it to you in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Okay. Well, I've got this. Thanks. Does anyone have an outspoken request this morning? Or is it? Anyone else this morning? Special needs, the living hands, loved ones, let's go to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the time and opportunity. Father, we give thanks for those prayers answered this morning and how you moved and touched in our lives. Father, continue to do so in each and every day that you stand or you see stand before you this morning, Lord God. We thank you for everything that was said and done, Lord God, and we ask you to continue before you are. Spirit upon each and every one of these needs spoken and what spoke to life. Father, we just ask you to continue to remember the western part of the state and the mountains here. Continue to touch with your hand. Show yourself strong in that area as well, Lord God. Father, we just ask you to continue to minister 
in this service today, prepare our hearts to receive your word. And all the pastor is able to bring you all message, Father. We thank you for everything. Perhaps Jesus landed in the church said, Consider items that do not need to be cooked to eat. Paper towels and toilet paper. Uh, Toiletry items. Travel bags contain all needed items. Bottled water. Flash lights with battery. Thank you in advance for supporting this. Now, this is going to go straight to them. This is no middleman. There's nobody taking any money out of this. This is going straight to them. And so, uh, and, and DC is going to tell us some things to you right now. DC is probably leaving because he's coordinating more people. He's already sent four plus teams and he's getting ready to send two more teams today. And so although he's not <clears throat> going personally, he's actually coordinating his, our people from here along with the other coordinators over there and he's keeping our county safe too. So we need to pray for DC and all those guys, all those guys, because it's, it's something. Yeah, we give a clap. Yeah, we want to pray for him. You know, DC, DC's gone about 48 hours without much sleep, <clears throat> and he's not the only one. There's other guys in there that's doing the same thing, and and the guys over there hearing things and seeing things they've never seen before, and that's tough. Uh, 
<clears throat> one of the guys said he told DC, he said they told him that they were coming up with their truck and they told him, he said, we're here. And they said, leave now, leave. And he said, leave? He said, yeah, the dam busted. Get out of here. And some of his guys lost everything that they brought with them. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on over there. And so we need to be praying because we're still helping over there and we're going to do all we can to help over there. But this right here, I know for sure, is happening. And again, that's going to be straight uh, to those people in need. So again, that, that's, one, that's one avenue. And there's others, but that's one right at this moment. Now, <clears throat> I reckon the reason, I reckon, I know the reason that God really worked hard on me last night. And it was 2 o'clock in the morning before I ever got through with this. And I put a lot up there because it's necessary for you to be able to see all of this. And uh, can somebody get me two AAA batteries, please? This thing is dying. I need two AAA batteries. All right. <clears throat> First of all, let me, let me ask you something. Or tell you something. If you can start the day without caffeine, and you're always cheerful, you ain't got to raise your hands. If you can start your day without caffeine and you're always cheerful, I added it to get me a couple pieces of candy out of my office too, alright? You can start your day without caffeine and you're always cheerful. And you can eat the same food every day and be grateful for it. Wow. If you're understanding when your loved ones are too busy for you, if you never treat a rich friend better than a poor friend, if you ever face the world without lies and deceit, then you're probably the family dog. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Thank you, Eddie. God's so good. All the time, God is good. Now, that was a whole lot better than all that all. Well, that's an ouch. If it was an ouch, I can understand. Get your Bible out. We were going to do several pieces of armor today, but I got zapped last night. Stand for the reading of the word. Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6. Stand for the reading of the word. Verse 10. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For the wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. But we're taking you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand. Therefore, having your loins cut about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the gospel of the preparation of peace. And we've already done all those. And above all, don't say above all. above all. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching up there too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me that others may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. I want y'all to listen to this too, because I won't plan on reading this, but I'll read it. For which I'm a bas I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. In other words, he's saying, I'm locked up, <clears throat> and I'm locked down, but I'm still God's man, <clears throat> and nothing you can do can stop what i got to say. Amen? So awesome. Let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord, and praise your name. We thank you for your grace, your mercy. We thank you, God, that you're with us today, Lord, in a special way. Lord, bless those people on the other side of the state, from Florida all the way up to Tennessee. Lord, let all the loved ones get a chance to hear that their loved ones are okay. 
And I thank you, God, for ministering there in such a powerful way. Touch our teams that are going over there. <coughs> Bless them and keep them safe. And Lord, touch these. Lord, I know, God, you got your hand on him. And I know, God, that all these guys together are going to protect over there and help over there. And they're still going to be able to do it over here. In the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise your name in the church said. Amen. You can be seated. On the way to help, on the way down, and tell somebody the past is behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, and nothing shall be impossible. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. Now, like I said, there's going to be a lot up here today, but I want y'all to watch. I know some of y'all take notes, and so you're going to get a chance to really, this, this is something special today, very special. You're going to get through this, not because you are strong, but because God is. We didn't tell those people over there, it said, in the path of the storm, you're going to get through this, not because you're strong, but because God is strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Here's a couple of slides, from just a couple, and then we're going to get right into it. Jesus said, I will build my church in the gates of hell, shall not be God against it. So, the devil knows he can't stop the building of the church, but he can try to stop the movement of God's church. Amen? Jesus Christ is doing the work in me, but it's up to me if I'm going to let God work through me. There's a difference in God doing the work in you and God doing the work through you. Amen? So, him doing it in me, Satan can't stop him doing it through me. He, he'll stop at every chance that he gets. Sharing the suffering uh, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And of course, bless me with all my strength. Teaches my hands to warm my fingers to fight. Endure hardness as a good soldier. Uh, we're not a playground, but we're on a battleground. Amen. And so, <clears throat> here it is. Weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Realize that we're equipped. God's got us, and Paul's not just making a suggestion, but Paul's giving a command, an immediate command. Pick up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand with what's coming up against you. Because Satan hates you. Did you know that? Satan hates you. If you're a child of God, Satan hates you. And if you start opening your mouth, he will definitely hate you. Amen? So now that we got this radical protection, there's three categories. We went over one of the categories, and now we're going over the second category. And the first one is... Uh, 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 the armor of consistency, have your loins girt about with truth. Remember, the, the, the belt held everything, including the shield of faith. The belt held all of the armor. It held the swords. It held uh, the ribbons. It held food. It held water. It had everything that the soldier needed was on his belt. And that belt of truth is know the word of God and know the truth of God versus the lies of Satan. Amen? With the whole armor of God, we're going to say it again. Here it is. The Lord's going about the truth. And again, that the breastplate of righteousness is the most beautiful, heaviest piece of armor. And we talked about the interlocking brass and the silver and how beautiful it was when you come over the mountain. It would blind people and it would scare them to death. And your, your feet shod with the, 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 the uh, preparation of the gospel of peace. And remember, those shoes... Those shoes, they would have uh, the shoes and then have your graves, which would come up your legs. And very seldom did you hear about a Roman soldier having a broken leg or having a torn leg because he was always covered in that area. And he was sure-footed because each one of his shoes, depending on where he was fighting, his shoes would have from one inch to three inch nails in them so he could be sure-footed and he could break the leg of his opponent. This is very important. You think about it, saying Satan wants to hurt you. He wants to make get you limping. He wants to get you where you can't stand up and take care of yourself or anybody else. The God of peace shall bruise him under your feet shortly. And I'm not going to do that again. And last week, my knee hurt all week long after I got here and was marching shortly. I am not marching shortly today. I promise you that was that was crazy with a hurt knee to be, be stomping like I stomped last week. So under. You're going to put it shortly. I'm going to do it softly. 
But the Roman soldier, that's the way they marched. They marched slow, and they marched deliberate, and nobody could stop what they were doing. Whatever got in their way, they got pushed over. Here we go. This is the one. In fact, I think I'm going to sit down for this one. Y'all get ready. If you're taking notes, please take some notes because this is very, very, very important. This is the one that kept me up till 2 o'clock this morning. So, so let's, uh, let's look at this. Above all, above all, y'all say it, above all, take in the shield of faith. All right, so here we go. Now I'm going to give you some information. Some good information. You got some double A batteries? I mean, triple A, triple A. This thing here's flashing. Y'all hold on technical difficulties. Of course, they're not going to go out until I'm using them. They don't know they're needed until you use them. That's right. They don't. And hopefully, these are good batteries, not dead batteries. Okay. Here we go. Ready? You ready? The Romans were very proud of their shields. And the Romans didn't just have one shield. The Roman soldiers owned two shields. Two. You could tell when they were marching what they were doing. The first shield was for parades. It was for ceremonies. They were small. They were round. They were decorated. Maybe it had their... Maybe they had some stuff they'd been through, some uh, <coughs> campaigns that they'd been on. <coughs> they looked good, but they were mainly for decoration. <laughs> I don't want to be one of them Christians that look good, but I'm only for decoration, for decorations. Well, come on, y'all. Do you want to be a Christian that looks good, but they're only for decoration? Amen? So, number one, it was for public, for parade, a really small shield. You'd see it carrying it. It was very nice looking. But number two is the one they used in battle. The Greek word for this means door. This shield had the shape of a door. This shield, if it had been made out of total metal <laughs> or total wood, it would have been almost impossible to carry because it was so big. Matter of fact, in battle, this shield would completely cover the Roman soldier. You see them, look like a door. When they come marching down, you see them in front. You don't even see the soldiers, all you see is that helmet, and you see that shield, and you see those feet. So it completely covered the Roman soldier, but this tells me that our shield of faith can completely cover us when we're in battle. Our shield of faith can protect us by nobody's business. So, here's this shield. <clears throat> Again, it's so big, how are you going to carry a door, a metal door, into battle? How are you going to carry a big old wooden door into battle? I'm glad you asked that question. The shield was not wood, it was not metal, although it may have some wood in the beginning stages of it. The shield was actually comprised of multiple layers of thick animal hide. It was thick, not only was there maybe six layers of thick animal hide, they were tightly woven together and they were as strong as steel. Wow. Six thick animal hides sewn tightly together, the size of a door, <coughs> and as strong as a piece of steel, but they're able to carry it. It was extremely strong, it was long lasting, and it was hard wearing. Likewise, some of y'all in here have been through some battles. You're going to do some battles now. You may have family over on the other side of the state. 
you may uh, I may be called to go over to the other side of the state, but whatever, whatever you're doing, many times you've had to learn to trust God and stand strong in your faith and know that your faith in God is extremely tough and is exceptionally durable. So, no matter how long, no matter how hard the enemy beats against your faith, your faith can outlast Satan's attacks. Your faith in God can outlast his attacks. I was in the detention center one day and the guy wanted to see me, so I went to go see him. He came to the, they had him in the room. <clears throat> and he told me what was going on. And I said, don't you know there's nothing that God can't do? And he said, and I quote, I'm not sure I believe in Jesus. And I responded with, well, I am sure that he believes in you. And that opened the door. Very powerful, powerful meeting that day. You see, our faith in God can get us through a lot of things that under normal circumstances, we couldn't do. I love this. Do not be afraid. I am your shield. That's why God told his people, don't, don't be afraid. I got you. I got you. So what I see is, <clears throat> because it was leather and because it was woven together, it was important that the Roman soldier take good care of it. Now I want you to think about this as I'm talking about your own shield of faith. All these words, all these things I'm saying, think about your own faith when I talk about this. Although this faith or this shield was extremely strong and extremely durable, and here's where some of us are at right now, it can possibly become stiff and break on and peel. And if the soldier didn't properly care for it, he was in big trouble. So part of the daily regiment of the Roman soldier was he would get up in the morning, he would do whatever they were going to do, then he would go pick up this shield and he would rub it with oil. He'd rub it, and he'd rub it, and he'd rub it with oil. And because he kept it rubbed with oil, it kept it soft, and it kept it pliable. So important was his shield that to ignore the application of oil was the equivalency of inviting his own death. That's how powerful this is. Now for us, faith that is ignored nearly always breaks, falls to pieces, especially when you're standing face to face and toe to toe with the enemy. That's why it's so important that we stay anointed with what God's got in his word and what God's got through the spirit that we let God keep us in that position and we pray to God and we seek God and we keep our oil on that faith and keep it soft and keep it pliable. That day when I talked to that guy and he said, I don't know if I believe in Jesus. The problem was he believed in Jesus but he had let his shield get dry. And because he let his shield get dry, he began to doubt that God was even there. There's people over in the mountains right now. There's people in Florida. There's people all the way up the coast, the, the middle coast. Some are reaching God. Some are blaming God. And others because the shields had gotten soft, excuse me, had gotten hard and stiff 
and breakable their understanding now not because of the storm but their reaction to the storm is really tough David said it was good that I was afflicted because then I turned to your statutes God and I started getting out of my way and started doing it your way and I became soft and pliable in your hands again and so, there's another reason that the Roman soldier's shield was made out of animal hide. Not only did he anoint it with oil every morning, but just before he went into battle, he did something special. If they knew the battle was coming, they had vats. And they would take their shields and they would place them in that tub of water. And they would soak that leather shield until it became totally saturated. Why in the world would they take this shield that's already anointed with oil and now saturate it with water? Well, what is happening? What is going on? Well, you see, the enemy often used arrows that carried fire. Fiery darts, they were called. And whenever they hit that shield, the shield between the oil and the water would extinguish the fiery darts of the wicked. Wow. Paul said, above all, taking up the shield of faith. For you'll be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. The wet surface would extinguish him on impact and it gave the soldier an upper hand in battle. Because they're thinking if you if you just got shot with some with a fire out with a fiery arrow, you'd be busy trying to put the fire out. You'd be busy trying to put out somebody else's fire. You'd be busy trying to move out of the way because you'd be scared of those fiery arrows coming. But with you had that shield that covered you like a door, and it was saturated. No matter what they threw at you, it would put it out. How many in here have been hit hard at times? And somebody would say, I don't know how you withstood that. I don't know how you handled that. I don't know how in the world you come out of this unscathed. It's because that person that came out of it had saturated. First they had anointed that shield. And they saturated that shield. And God was quenching those fiery darts. We must make certain that we're allowing the Holy Spirit to freshly anoint our lives on a daily basis as we regularly saturate our faith with the water of God's Word. Now, let's get a little deeper. This is good stuff. And this, I actually was just going to do the shield of faith one slide and then go to the next. And no, I just couldn't do it. The Holy Spirit just kept nudging me and nudging me. The enemy in that day used three types of arrows. The first arrow is just that plain arrow like you see on the cowboys and Indians, just that plain arrow. Just an arrow that will shoot at you. It may have a different kind of head, a pointed head or a diamond head, but still it was just a plain arrow. The second arrow will be dipped in tar and be set on fire. So that's the fire, one of the fiery darts. They would take it with that tar on it on fire and they would shoot it and wherever they hit, it stood a good chance of setting something on fire. But have you ever seen in the movies where somebody, especially in those days, hit something with the arrow and it seemed to explode? And the fire just went shoo. That's the extreme fiery darts of the wicked. 
These arrows are special arrows. These arrows, they were slender. They were cane, empty canes. And in the middle of it, it was hollow, and they would put a combustible fluid in it, and they would seal it up. And then when they shot it, you would think it was a plain arrow coming. Well, as soon as it hit, it was like a little bomb blowing up. These full of field arrows were not used mainly or usually in normal combat situations. They reserved these to inflict damage on the fortified places where the enemy or where their enemy was encamped. Our enemy seeks to control our fortified places, our heart, our spirit, our attitude, our faith. And so, have you ever said he's doing everything he's got at me? If you're saying he's doing everything he's got, you're saying he's shooting the plane arrows, he's going to shot the tar arrows. And now he's shooting those arrows that explode. Because he wants to get to your emotions. He wants to get to your heart. He wants to destroy your faith. He wants you to doubt God's even working or interested in your life. This is so important to understand this warfare that's going on. So now, let's take it a little bit further. When we first started, we said, above all, the first time I read that, I thought it meant more than anything else, had that shield of faith. That's not what that means in the Greek. Above all is actually a position. over other places. It can be better or more or easily translated is to put it out in front because it's covering all. Put it out in front of you. Above all means put it out in front. So, now this gets really, 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 really deep here. If you were to see those soldiers marching in the battle, have you noticed? They were disciplined, but have you noticed that their shields would never break rank? They're not just holding like this and watching each other. Their shields had clips, hinges on each side. And when the partner got beside him and the partner on this side, their shields would lock together. And so when they marched, it made a, impe, imp, uh, un, you can't penetrate it, praise God. <laughs> I'm from Possum Track, sometimes fancy English messes me up. And then, pe you can't penetrate it, I'll get out of here. Because the shields were linked together. Whenever the fiery darts were being fired, the legionnaire would holler, Testudo! And when he would holler, Testudo, which is Greek for tortoise, Testudo, they would drop to their knee and they would take their shield and hold it over their head. Latch together with the people on the outside would stand holding the shields this way and everybody in the middle standing with the shield over their head. You couldn't penetrate it. The test two of the formation was feared by people. Because once they call a test too, though, you are not going to get them. You know, I think about that. I 
And I think about God saying, one of you will chase a thousand. What can two do? We'll put 10,000 in flight. Can you imagine how it is if we all get together and put our faith side by side? That's why camp meetings usually are so awesome because everybody's gone in and they're forgetting about outside, they're forgetting what they're going through, and they all latch their faith in together. Like revival, you get a revival. And 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 it's amazing what happens when people come in from all churches and they come in and they latch their shields together as a body of Christ, that we can learn to latch our shields of faith together. There's nothing we cannot do. Faith, faith is designed to be in the front we can completely cover you in every situation of life. One of our prayers should be, God, keep me covered with fresh oil. Keep me covered, God, with a fresh anointing. Psalm 92 and 10 says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And that word anointed, there does not just mean to pour it. It means to put it in your hands and to rub it. So when God anoints you with fresh oil, he says, God, I just don't want you to pour it on my head. I want your hands on me, God. I want you to let me know you're there. I want to feel you touching me, God. And I need that fresh oil on my body because it's amazing what God can do if you will just Trust him. I know it's true. Above all, taking up the shield of faith. Taking up. Taking up. Taking up the shield of faith. It's kind of a double meaning to that. First it means, when you see the battle coming, pick it up. Put it in front of you. Don't leave it on your belt. Pick it up. But it also means, once a soldier's been knocked down, when he gets back up, pick up that shield again and hold it. There may be somebody here today that you're picking that shield up and you're holding it, you're believing God, and there may be some of you in here has had the breath knocked out of you. And your shield's laying to your side. My challenge to you today is pick it up. You need to pick it up and apply His truth, His righteousness, His peace, and His faith. And having done all the stand, stand. Brandon, come and play something, bro. God's got you. 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 I really believe somebody needs to hear this. You're thinking that this hit has just been too hard. This attack has been too rough. That that shield was knocked out of your hands. And your faith is being tested. And I'm here to tell you today, it might really takes something, but if you can reach down and pick up that shield and put it back up in front of you. Maybe it's gotten hard 
and it's cracked. Anoint it with oil and water. The Spirit and His Word anoint it and hold it. And watch what God will do. Everybody please stand. When we see things like what happened with this hurricane, it's so easy to start doubting God and asking Him, where's He at? Why didn't He stop it? There's a lot of things that happen in life. I wonder why didn't God stop it? This was not God's original plan. His original plan was something very special, that garden. And the Bible says when Adam and Eve sinned, they brought all this on us, and it just keeps escalating because the Bible says in the last days this stuff was going to happen. And in many places and in different places, I would never expect the mountains to be going through what they're going through. Never. God's got us. He told us this stuff was coming. Our job is to hold up that shield of faith together. Lock them. Lock them side by side. Holler testudo and stand the storm. With every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today, And you would be, you would say, Pastor, I, I hate to say it, Pastor, but I really don't, I'm not where I should be with God, and I really want to be. Can you please, please pray with me? You're not going to come up here. We're going to do everything. It's going to be different. It's not going to be, you're not going to be singled out. You would say, I really need to get closer to God than I've done. I've, I've let stuff tarnished my shield the oil's dried up the water's dried up and I really need to get closer to God but every head bowed every eye closed if you put that hand up I really need to get closer I need it I need it I need it bless them bless them bless them bless them Lord maybe you're here today and you and God are good but you've been taking on a lot of fiery darts lately and although you know you're covered, it still can rack your nerves. Sometimes we get hit so hard that it, even with that shield, it hurts. Guys with bulletproof vests, that bullet might not penetrate their vest, but it sure hurts them. It'll bruise them. Even knock them down. Some of y'all, you believe in God, you're trusting God, but then fiery darts have hit that shield and hit it and bruised you, maybe it knocked you down. But I want to be here with you today and rock my shield with yours. So we together and whoever else can stand against these fiery darts that you may be going through. And I'm talking to you today with nobody looking around, every head bowed, every eye closed. Would you put that hand up? I've been under attack, and I really, 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 really need my shield to be real, be saturated. Follow right now in the name of Jesus. I love you. I praise you and I thank you for what you're about to do in this place right now. Something's getting ready to take place in this, something's getting ready to take over in this place, and that is your spirit's going to do an anointing on some folks if they'll just trust you. Something special 
is getting ready to take place. Right now, let's take the hand of the person next to you. Lock in shields of faith. And I want you to hold them hands up. God took a lot or took Ezekiel and divided dry bones. And he said, shall these bones live? And he said, you know that, Lord. And he said, you just prophesy to them. You give them the word of God to let breath come back in them and watch what I do. Right now, in the name of Jesus, together, we're standing. And together, we're prophesying. Ready? Y'all repeat after me. God! Breathe new life into everybody here. Touch us, Lord, with a fresh anointing. And we thank you that our faith, although tested, can be trusted in the name of Jesus. Glory! Come on! Glory! Trust the Word of God. Trust the Word of God. God's awesome. God is awesome. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer. And after we say the Lord's Prayer, I'm going to ask Brother Wayne to dismiss us in prayer. Ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the words that sent upon our hearts and our minds, Lord. And Father, we do ask that we all stand together, Lord, during this crucial time. Father, we know you're in complete control of everything in this world, Lord. We ask you to reach down and touch those in the western part of our state that need that extra touch today, Lord. Let them know that you're still there for them, Father. It may look like it's a devastation, Father, but it could be a renewal of life, Father, for each and every one. Go with us with your partner's doors today, Lord. Let us be an inspiration for those that need it, Father. Send us in the path that you have us to go. And all this will give praise and honor to your Son, Jesus Christ, because it's in His Son, His name, that I ask this. Amen. 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 Yeah.